Welcome, everyone, and um, good evening. I'll start by acknowledging country. I acknowledge the continuing connection of Aboriginal people to country, culture and community, including traditional custodians of this land, the Wadundi and Kanyang people of the Noongar Nation, paying respects to elders past and present. I declare the meeting open at 5.02pm. This meeting is being live streamed and digitally, digitally recorded in accordance with Council Policy EM CP 2. Members of the public are reminded that no other visual or audio, audio recording of this meeting by any other means is allowed without the permission of the chairperson. Whilst every endeavour has been made to only record those who are actively participating in the meeting, loud comments or noises from the gallery may be picked up in the recording. In attendance, we have Deputy President Lisa Glover to my right here, Councillor John Bailey, we work around the table, um, Councillor Alexis Davey, Councillor Peter Gubler, Councillor Anita Lindemann, Councillor Anne Mitchell, Councillor Grant Patrick, and Councillor Diana Shand. To my right, I have Director of Finance and Corporate, Mr. Kim Dolzadeli, Director of Operations, Mr. Ross Marshall, and over to the left, we have Sam Farquhar, Administration Officer, Corporate Services, Lauren Clifford, Manager of Corporate Services, and CEO Gary Hunt, Chief Exec, sorry, Interim CEO Gary Hunt. Welcome to everyone in the public gallery. We have uh, no apologies. Are there any other apologies? No. Um, Approve leave of absences. There are none. Applications for leave of absence. Councillor Grant Patrick requested a leave of absence for the ordinary council meeting to be held on the 24th of July, 2024. Councillor Lisa Glover requested a leave of absence for the ordinary council meeting to be held on the 22nd of May, 2024. Are there any other requests for leave of absence? Announcements from the presiding member. I beg your pardon. Would someone like to move a motion to grant the leaves of absence? Councillor Lindemann, seconded Councillor Davey. All in favour? Carried. We've got three announcements to get through tonight. Um, I'd like to draw your attention in the public gallery and through video live stream to um, a, call for community, a call for comment by community members. The Shire has prepared a draft local planning strategy to guide how our community will grow and develop over the next 15 years. The draft strategy aims to reflect the community's vision for the future as expressed in the Shire's strategic community plan. It captures the outcomes of the pro preliminary survey that was conducted in Ma March 2022. The West Australian Planning Commission has certified the draft strategy for public advertising and our community is now invited to comment. You can find the draft strategy and details on how to lodge your submission on the Shire website with printed copies and, um, and submission forms available in the Shire office. Your feedback will be considered and proposed modifications presented back to the um, Council and to the WA Planning Commission for final endorsement. And on another very important document to be released by the Shire is our Disability Access Inclusion Plan. This is a five-year plan which forms the basis for how we will move forward to achieve greater access and inclusion. I'd like to thank the community members who worked with Shire staff to provide qualitative information and who shared their experiences of living within our Shire. The plan reflects the work that's been done in the past, what we're continuing to, to do and, while, and building on this in the future. And finally, I would like to express on behalf of our Shire councils and community members our sincere gratitude to the finance director, sorry, the director of finance and corporate services. Mr. Kim Dolzadeli joined the Shire three years ago as the fifth person in the role within six years, 
and I can only imagine what you walked into. Kim's deep financial knowledge and experience in local government has introduced many improvements. He unleashed greater functionality in our Synergy financial software, enabling improved reporting. He also drove positive change in many processes and controls to the benefit of the Shire. Arriving here in August 21, one month into the 21-22 financial year, am I right? Uh, you brought the Shire of Donnybrook bailing up in that 11 months <laughs> to the attention of the Office of the Auditor General for good reasons. We were ranked top 10 in the financial reporting and control and audit performance. And to put this in context, there are 137 local governments in Western Australia. So well done and thank you. More recently, Kim stepped up into the role of acting CEO during the election period and following the election, Kim has supported nine new councillors in coming up to speed with our financial knowledge and awareness of the Shire's systems and processes. He also presented to us um, a, a comprehensive presentation showing us the many services which his area is responsible for and which we had previously not understood were delivered. Feedback from your team members, Kim, is that you're an okay boss. <laughs> Thank you for your leadership and development of your teams. And I know that you also enjoyed working with them. Um, you're a pleasure to work with Kim, and I'm sure I speak for everyone here when I say that you will be missed. And I hope that you can now enjoy a well-earned rest. Go well with our best wishes for success in whatever you choose to do in the future. Thank you, Madam President. Would you like to say something? Um, through you, if I may, Madam President. Um, it's been an honour uh, to serve the community and serve the councillors and, and indeed the Commissioner when she was here as well. Um, and I've certainly thoroughly enjoyed working with all the staff at the, at the Shire of Donnybrook Barting Up. They are a special group of people. Um, they really work together. They're very committed. Um, and I can only wish the Council the community and the staff for all the very best into the future. I think um, Donnybrook's a well-placed uh, community to um, reap the benefits of changes that are occurring throughout rural Western Australia. Um, and uh, I certainly indeed wish, wish all and sundry the very best. And thank you for my time here. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Heartfelt thanks. <laughs> okay. Moving on to declarations of interest, item four. In accordance with Division 6, Subdivision 1 of the Local Government Act 1995, care should be taken by councillors to ensure that a financial, indirect financial or proximity interest is declared and that they leave the chambers and refrain from voting on any matter which is considered to come within the Act. Councillor Lisa Glover declared a proximity, a financial and an indirect financial that uh huh, exactly, my error there. Councillor D Glover, I'll restate that, has declared a financial, an indirect financial, and proximity interest regarding confidential item 12.1.1, as she is a co owner of a property on the boundary of VC Mitchell Park. Her property is tenanted, and she is a member of various sporting clubs, and her partner is also a co owner of the same property. In accordance with Regulation 19AA of the Local Government Administration Regulations 1996 and Division 4, Clause 22 of the Shire of Donnybrook Bailing Up Code of Conduct for Council Members, committee members and candidates should, be ta should take care to declare an interest that could or could reasonably be perceived to adversely affect their impartiality and remain in chambers to debate and vote on the matter. Councillor Anne Mitchell has declared an impartiality interest regarding item 9.2.4 through kinship. Do any council members or staff have an interest to declare? Okay, public question time. We initially have at 5.1, responses to previously asked questions taken on notice. And then in public question time 5.2, I'm not sure, do we have any? Thank you. Have you filled out a form there? If you'd like to come up to the podium and just state your name and address and 
Ask your question. Testing. Yeah, I have a question regarding the uh, debriefing report, uh, which is about to be discussed under, I don't know, the number. Um, I wonder how can the council vote for a motion to approve the uh, debriefing report when the public had so little time to digest it and react to it? I mean, the report was published a week ago. Um, that's my first question. I cannot see that the council just nearly really approves or whitewashes this debriefing report. The second question I have is, uh, uh, will the council uh, provide time uh, for uh, a motion in the sense that, uh, if I find it, um, in the sense that the Shire is directed not to approve mass events during the restricted fire season outside the immediate uh, township area. Uh, also, uh, the council should consider uh, to direct the Shire that it doesn't grant noise control exemptions according to Regulation 18 of the Act. Uh, in connection with that, uh, when these mass events are applied for, it is not good enough to notify the right players of their fight. Uh, but they must be given an opportunity to agree or to object to, uh, to, uh, for, uh, to an approval of these applications. So your second question, Pardon? can you... Yeah, well, the I question I stated sure. before, will the council provide time to discuss uh, these points I just uh, raised? Um, uh, I think it's... The council should also consider and would answer whether it wouldn't be appropriate that the council notifies and asks ratepayers instead of the organizers of the event. There's clearly a, a, a problem of the interest involved. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, before you go, I didn't catch your name and where you live. It's Harry Orthiel, O-R-T-H-E-I-L. And Harry. Thank you. And where do you live, sorry? Uh, uh, Thompson Brook. Thompson Brook. Thank you very much, Harry. CEO Hunt, could I ask you to answer those questions, the two questions? Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, in, res in response to the questions that, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that you've posed and the statements that you've made, um, I, I draw to your attention that item three uh, of the recommendation to the council is that a further report be provided not later than June 2024 to outline procedures and protocols incorporating community engagement strategies that would govern the approval process for future events. And the events may be proposed by either community or commercial entities and are intended to take place within the Shire. That actually intends to address some of the issues that you've raised, sir. Um, in relation to uh, the other comments, um, I, I believe the, the staff and the event promoter have endeavoured to address the issues that were raised and drawn to the attention um, rising from the event and input from elected members. We've had considerable input from elected members into the process. So I think in summary, we acknowledge that things could have been done better. Um, we need to address a number of the issues and in particular the issue of engagement with the community um, is better handled than uh, it was on this occasion. So that's, that's a, a valid comment, um, but I can assure you the staff have taken on board the issues that have been raised. Thank you, CEO Hunt. Moving on to item six, 
Are there any other questions to be raised? Thank you. Moving on to item six, 6.1 petitions. There are no petitions. 6.2 presentations. We have no presentations. Um, do we have a deputation? Um, Mr. Fry's not in the audience, so I can only presume he's made a decision that... Uh, not to attend. Based on conversations today, he, he queried whether um, he wanted to progress with the deputation. So it was granted. Um, he's not here, so I guess he's decided not to proceed with it. Thank you, CEO Hunt. Moving on to item seven, confirmation of minutes. 7.1, annual general meeting of electors, 22nd of February, 2024. Would councillors like to move the motion? Councillor Lindemann and seconded by Councillor Mitchell. All in favour? Yes. Sorry, um, I um, raised a question around this um, at the um, agenda briefing and that was around the elected members' motions um, and about the wording of it because it said it was lapsed rather than the um, wording at the time was deferred. Um, thank you, Councillor Gulliver. CEO Hunt. Um, 7.1 is the annual general meeting of electors. Oh. Oh. Are there any questions on the annual general meeting of the electors? No? Um, so that's ca all in favour, because we had a... Carried. Thank you. Oh, ca Peter, uh, Councillor Goodbill, were you in favour? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Carried. 7.2, South West Country Zone, 23rd of February 2024. Would someone like to move... To Councillor Lindemann, a seconder. Councillor Gubler, all in favour? Or any questions first? <laughs> all in favour. <laughs> 7.3, the ordinary meeting of council held on the 28th of February 2024. Um, would someone like to move the motion? Councillor Patrick, second. Councillor Glover, any questions? Yes, I'd like to ask a question about this one. Um, and I, like I said, I did ask a question at the agenda briefing about the wording of the elected member's motion. Um, the wording on it was that it was lapsed due to um, the elected member not being present. However, the wording on the minutes actually speaks about it being deferred. Thank you, Councillor Glover. CEO Hunt. Um, thank you, Madam President. The you are correct on the audio, it says deferred, but for it to be deferred, it had to be moved. It wasn't moved, so therefore it lapses. So that, under the provisions of the, the legislation, unless someone moves the deferral, it, it automatically lapses. So the minutes are correct. The statement on the audio, um, uh, you're correct, the, the presiding member said deferred. I actually went across to her at that stage and said, unless someone moves a motion, that's not. And so therefore it's deferred and you'd already moved on. Thank you, CEO Hunt. Are there any further questions? Okay. Um, all in favour? Thank you. Carried. Item 7.4, special meeting of council held on the 28th of February 24. Would someone like to move the motion? Councillor Glover and seconder. Councillor Goobler, all in favour? Carried. Item 7.5, the Audit and Risk Management Me Committee meeting held on the 13th of March 2024. Would someone like to move that the, the motion? Thank you, Councillor Glover. Seconded, Councillor Bailey. Um, all in favour? No. Well, oh, any may questions? I, may I? Um, I just had a query around the wording of this particular um, recommendation because um, I don't believe that we can all state that the minutes of this meeting are confirmed as a true and accurate record when we didn't attend the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, CEO Hunt. 
the, the minutes of the meeting, and you were at the meeting. Yeah, Councillor. Um, you are relying on those that were in attendance that they, they, those um, minutes are accurate. If someone in the meeting um, or attended the meeting says they're inaccurate, then they should, should identify. Mm -hmm. But the, the resolutions at the meeting, there was only one resolution which was to adopt the compliance return. And that's what the minutes say. Thank you, CEO Hunt. I'll move the motion. Would you, either of you, like to second the motion? Sorry? Just a question to the CEO. Gary, is that not receiving it? I mean, I understand what you're saying, but you'd be asking people to say that it's true and correct, as Lisa Glover said, or Councillor Glover said. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. CEO Hunt? Um, well, you can receive the minutes if that's... Um, if that's what you decide to do, I can't direct you to do otherwise. But the normal process would be that you're adopting the minutes and the recommendations contained within. Councillor Lindemann? Has this been moved to be on the table for question time? Have we? Yep. Yes. OK. Yep. Thank you. Um, I guess my question is then, in every time that someone is absent from a meeting and we say, are these true and correct minutes, is that not the same thing? whether you intend or not, you still say, I believe these people to say it's true and correct. Thank you, Councillor Lindemann. I'm assuming that's correct. CEO Hunt? Absolutely correct. Councillor Davey? Um, just a query why the mover was changed from Councillor Glover to Councillor McCarthy. I moved it. Sorry, I I'm not with you. It had Which already is... been moved by Councillor Glover and seconded by Councillor Bailey, Bailey prior to you asking for it to be moved again and changing it? I moved it. Oh, sorry. I beg oh, okay. your pardon. I beg your pardon. You just moved it twice. <laughs> so it moved Councillor Glover, seconded Councillor Bailey. Thank you. So we've got it moved and seconded. <laughs> Sorry, I'd like to speak to that too. Thank you, um, Councillor Shand. And I agree what you're saying, uh, Councillor Lindemann. However, I can't personally say that something's true and accurate if I haven't been a part of it. So, yeah, it's an integrity vote, I guess. Thank you, Councillor Shand. The, the challenge you have, councillors, is you are required to vote if you're in the chamber. If you don't vote, then that puts me in a very awkward position as I've explained what's before. Um, um, Councillor um, Davey. <laughs> Sorry to speak out of turn. Um, previously, both Councillor Bailey and myself have um, been absent from meetings and had to say that it was true and correct, and we just noted it on the minutes that we had supported the motion. Um, however, we weren't absent and we were relying on our, the presence of our peers. We can do that. CEO Hunt, we, are yep, we in a position to vote on yep. this? I don't want it to be a problem later yep. on. That's fine. Okay. Um, all in favour? Oh, Councillor Glover? Sorry. <laughs> My thought about this is more around that the Audit and Risk Management Committee would confirm the meeting, the minutes as true and correct during their next meeting, and we're just receiving these minutes. Um, I'm not sure how that works, Councillor Glover, with deferred. Um, with delegated authority. CEO Hunt? Um, can I offer this as an option that the minutes of the Audit and Risk Committee held on the 13th of March be noted and the recommendation contained therein adopted? That way it'll overcome the problem. So if the mover and the second withdraw the original motion and you adopt the words I just gave you, then that will solve the problem. It would read, the minutes of the Audit and Risk Committee meeting held on the 13th of March 2024 be noted and the recommendations contained therein adopted by the Council. So 
second part was we noted and that the recommendations contained in the meeting be adopted. Like the rest out. Thank you. The, the mover and the second would have to agree to withdraw. Mover and seconder, do you agree to withdraw? Uh, councillors, it's just been drawn to my attention that part of that recommendation is carried in nine point in the recommendation 9.2.5. When we get there, we'll note that earlier on the council has ad adopted the recommendation of the committee, and I'll revise how these matters are dealt with in the future. Thank you, CEO Hunt. That would bring me to ask first ask the mover and second to with seconder to withdraw, and then we'll move it again. But we'll also invite debate on that um, second segment. Would someone, would you like to move, um, remove your, how do you word it, remove, withdraw, withdraw your the, move and second? The mover of the motion can withdraw it because we ran into trouble with what was being proposed. So if the mover and the second withdraw the motion and then you can insert the one that I just recommended to you, it can be the same two people move and second it, that way you address the issue that's raised and causing concern. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I withdraw as seconder. And Councillor Glover, you withdraw. Thank you. Would someone like to move the second, move this motion as it stands now? Yes. Councillor Patrick. Councillor Linderman. Um, any questions? Bearing in mind that we will not be covering that item later in the agenda. Um, sorry, I, um, I'm, I'm ready to cover that item later in the agenda. I don't want to withdraw. Um, you can cover it now. Okay. Yep. All right. That's cool. So, can any I, questions can now? I, yeah. This will be in place of the item, I think it was 9.2.5? Yeah. So, it's in relation to the, the, the CAR um, findings or the... Um, the in, in relation to... The compliance audit return, yeah. Yes. Yep. So I, I do have a couple of questions, if I may. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, um, finance 7, it reports a comment, but um, it doesn't show that it's clear if the auditor's report was actually received within 30 days of completion. So I'm wondering um, if I can get some clarity around whether... It has dates, but it doesn't actually say a yes or no whether it was received within 30 days. Thank you. Um, Director of Finance and Corporate, would you like to respond? Thank you. Bearing in mind, we can take it on notice. Uh, uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, thank you for the question. Um, in short, yes, it was. Um, the completion of audit, we received the uh, actual uh, complete audit opinion after the audit exit meeting, um, which, which was basically the, the last um, activity in the completion of the audit. Uh, we received that within two days. May I continue with some questions? Um, a finance optional decision, oh sorry, optional um, question one, on the, the one below. Um, 
I'm just wondering how will the lack of the internal audit be completed and when is it proposed to be done? Thank you, Councillor Glover. Director of Finance and Corporate. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, and thank you for the question. Um, this question I've already answered. Um, Has that been I, answered previously? I, I do believe that I've supplied the answer to all councillors um, previously, uh, but I'm happy to answer it right here. And that is that the, um, the amounts are included in the 23-24 budget. Um, I've got some councillors nodding their head in acknowledgement of the fact yes, they know this. Yep. Um, and, uh, and effectively, um, they are scheduled to be completed by the end of the financial year. Thank you, Director of Finance and Corporate. Can I just confirm, so um, there is an audit, auditor that has been requested to do, do the audit? Is that what it is? Because um, I know there was a, um, a, a quote that was completed by um, AMD. Um, so has that, is, is it going to be the same process to get another auditor? Thank you, Councillor Glover. It Director will be, Finance. thank you, Madam President. Um, so AMD were appointed to do the internal audit, which is actually separate to the audits we're talking about within the compliance order return. Um, there has been a delay on that, and that has been on the basis that the Office of the Auditor General has gone out to tender for audit firms to contract to them to perform audits for local governments, and that occurs every three years. We had an update that they'd extended the, um, the period to which they were going to look at those audits or, or the award of those tenders up to the 23rd of March. We still haven't had anything back from their procurement team. I believe I forwarded a copy of that email as well to councillors. Um, as such, at the moment, nobody wants to quote on any of this work because if they get the actual OAG uh, appointment, they're unable to actually do the work. So we're at a little bit of a stalemate. Um, there is $15,000 in for both the financial management regulation audit and the reg, uh, audit reg 17 audit as well. Um, so uh, effectively we are reliant on knowing when the appointments have been made and then I'm sure that those that have missed out will be keen to, uh, to provide an RFQ for us. Thank you. Are we going to put this to vote? Is there anyone who likes to speak to the motion or Councillor Davey? Um, could I please get some clarity on whether we, um, by adopting this motion, um, we are supporting both the committee recommendation and the executive recommendation in item 9.2.5. I just want to make sure that we are endorsing the certification um, so it can be submitted to the Department of Local Government? Yes, that's correct. CEO Hunt, would you like to conform, confirm? Yes. Are there any further questions? Um, any right to... Well, thank you. All in favour? Carried. That brings us to point eight, reports of committees, and we have none. Brings us to point nine, reports of officers. 9.1, the Director of Operations. 9.1.1, Councillor Lindemann. Moving, Moving. sorry, Councillor Lindemann. It's the Meliora New Year's Arts and Music Festival, moved by um, Councillor Lindemann, seconded. Councillor Glover. Is there any questions? Councillor Lindemann. I'd just like to speak to the motion, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to put my support with the Executive Officer's, officer's recommendation. I'd also like to thank them for a balanced and comprehensive report. 
I think most people know I made no secret of my support for this unique music and arts festival, also for events. Um, I support small business and uh, the community and its prosperity. It was overwhelmingly positive uh, at that festival, taking into consideration I attended and I'm not the targeted demographic. I've got a few points here. I did write a report, but I just want to highlight it because I think it matters that there is support for millennials and Gen Zs because they are definitely combined will take over boomers in numbers already and in years to come will be our majority. So, one, the visiting backpackers were there because they shared a love of music and were also able to obtain work. Um, we do not necessarily want to be known as the oldest demographic shire in the southwest, and that was by a census in 2021, and our average age is 49. This is um, this place, this event showcases us in the best possible light as a progressive open for business and willing to work with individuals and businesses to create an unforgettable, unforgettable experience targeting younger people or with our beautiful natural environment as a backdrop. It also allows landowners to diversify and that secures uh, their future. Uh, I have not met a person yet who doesn't like music. It's usually just a matter of taste. It is well organised. Um, it was run really well. There were volunteers, which at the moment we can't get volunteers in any organisation at all, so they've done extremely well. Police were in attendance, as it's been noted, and the festival brought young people from all over the world, which is pretty good also. I note that you know, there were some issues with the music, but overwhelmingly it was positive and I hope to see continued events. Thank you, Councillor Lindemann. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? Councillor Glover? Um, as the seconder, I'm wondering if I have an opportunity to speak about this as well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I would like to propose an amendment to this motion, please. Um, thank you. Do you have the amendment there? I do, I do. Has this been given to? No, I'm, I apologise. I have, everything is handwritten um, at the moment, but I can read it out. It is helpful, councillors, to put that in before in writing. No. Can you have read out the amendment, please? Um, in regard to what is now point four, but it's point one in the original one, um, um, to not receive. Um, I'm happy with the second point. Um, the third point, um, rather than the word notes, put request. Um, so it basically reads, um, request the CEO to present a report to council for review no later than June 20, 2024. This re report will outline procedures and protocols incorporating community engagement strategies that will govern approval process for future events. These events may be proposed by commercial identities, so if you take out of the word by either community and all. Um, and then um, it, it, and are intended to take place within the Shire and one line at the end of that. The report will also outline basis for council approval for non-complying events. Oh, so it, oh, yeah, well it could go there or right, just at the end. <laughs> Thank you. 
well, so my outline, can, um, outline basis for council approval. For non-complying events. Thank you, Councillor Glover. Would anyone like to second that motion? Councillor Bailey? Would anyone like to speak to the motion? If Thank I you. may speak to the, um, Thank you. the, the motion. <laughs> um, firstly, um, I, I, I do give praise to the people attending the event and the people all that were involved as there were no incidents and overall the event did appear to be very well organised. Um, I give praise to the people who did it. I think it was a wonderful event. Um, however, um, in regard to my point one about not receiving that report, I find that um, the, the detail, de detailed debrief and summary report, um, it is noted with thanks, um, however, to accept the report as factual would then be the basis for the report. Um, sorry, I would have trouble as accepting it as totally factual. I find that there was some um, some subjective information in that report. Um, my concerns with it were um, that it was more anti antidotal evidence. Um, which I just can't endorse those kinds of um, that information as a fact. For example, saying that the bakeries were busier than usual. Um, it was a really busy time of the year anyway. We, the town was really busy, whether it was because of this event or whether it was because it was the holiday period. We have no way of substantiating that in, um, information. Um, and I know myself, I was around that time and I did note that the town was very busy, but we had holiday and campers and we had all sorts of people coming through. Um, and also the fact that there were no pass outs for that event as well. They promoted that they would have no pass outs. It meant that people were at the event. The only time that they would have been coming to or from um, would be when they visited businesses, otherwise they were camping. Um, I would, so, um, uh, and the, um, the, the, the part about the compliments, I found that very difficult to believe that those compliments were all legitimate compliments. The time frames of those compliments coming in were in clusters and so um, it, it would it, it was really hard to identify whether they were really legitimate or whether someone was just sitting there doing it on a phone, going to a laptop, going to another phone. They were in clusters. Um, so it's very hard to believe that they were actual compliments from real people. But I can say that the people who came and they, they laid complaints were seriously genuine. They put a lot of effort into what articulating what it was that was concerning for them, and I think we really need to take into consideration how it did impact um, our ratepayers and our community members. Um, I'm also concerned when it's reporting about staff time, um, when they say it was 16.5 officer days that they put into this report, and then to say that that would just be usual. I find that a little bit, um, I, I, you know, slightly difficult to believe. And I also have to keep on coming back. This is a paid private organisation that's running this event, not a community event such as the Apple Festival or the Far Small Farm Field Day or the um, Medieval Festival. Um, the comparison between the events and the time that was used, I find it very difficult to compare that because one is actually the whole community is involved and the other one is to, for a for-profit organisation. Um, the report also doesn't outline the, um, it outlines the length of music, but when I asked about whether that was breached, I haven't been able to find an answer whether the length of time of the music being played 
or the actual volume of the music, whether that had actually been breached or not. And although I asked the question, it hasn't been answered. And in regard to point, so I'm, I'm, I feel slightly satisfied that number two is okay because I think the community do need to know the answers for the frequently asked questions. But in regard to point three, um, by changing the word to request the CEO and rather than note, it means that it's more likely that it's going to happen. I find it tricky to understand the, the, um, the, the definition of note and re receive of request are two different things. When they note it, it doesn't mean that we're going to receive it. Um, so I'd like to change that to kind of tie that in a little bit more. And I like to um, take out the, again, the for-profit from the community organisations. I think our Shire staff are well versed in putting together community organisations and I find that that needs to be a separate line about what this report needs to contain because it's a whole different, um, a, a whole different uh, um, event, yeah, yeah. Um, the other part, the last part that I'm putting in there as well is that when an application comes in to council for the non-complying, for a non-compliant event, i.e. music is after hours, music go, goes longer or later or louder, um, then we, if we don't have any say in it, we, community members come to us to say that they're concerned about it, but if we have no say in what happens to it, then we, we're held accountable, but we have no, no way of, of, of actually holding any control over that too. I'm not saying that I'm going to stop any events, but we could actually try to um, find ways so that we can help articulate that to community members to say, yes, we discussed that. And also, as um, when I spoke to Councillor Mitchell about it, the idea of a bond would be a fantastic thing and that could all be part of this, re um, this report as well or when it comes to council so that if something does go wrong, we have a way of funding that concern, i.e. if staff get called out to an event because people are complaining, it's our expense. We, we cover that cost as ratepayers. Whereas if the event holder was held accountable for it and we said, okay, this is going to be worth so much to you, they're less likely to breach. At the moment, we have no, um, there, there's no consequences for a breach at the moment, and I think that, that those things need to be sorted out through Council and through this report. Can I just remind Councillors that there's a five minute limit on comments? Um, Councillor Patrick? Um, the appropriate time to speak against the proposed amendment? Yes, we're talking against yep. that proposed so amendment. I am. Um, purely that what we're being asked to receive is the music festival debrief summary report, not recommendations on all the changes and things that need to be proposed to change it, which has been acknowledged, and that's what point three is about. We are noting the chief executive, executive will present a report because we have been advised that that is the intention of the CEO. It will then be minuted as a, a, an official record um, so there is that requirement there for the CEO to comply with what has been, you know, minuted. But what we're actually receiving is a debrief summary report, not recommendations about what needs to change or how it needs to change. That is what point three is all about. So from my perspective, the original executive recommendation um, is fair and reasonable, and uh, I don't think these changes actually reflect what it is that we're being asked to do. Would anybody like to speak for the motion? Councillor Bailey. Through the chair. Um, look, there's no doubt staff have done a great job putting together what could have been an absolute mess. But I think that we've got to get on the table the things of the time of year. We can't allow something like that to happen in the middle of summer again. You know, I can't even drive a machinery in a total fire ban. But we can have a we can have something like that. So we need to get on and understand the time of the year is paramount. It could have been a total disaster. And the, pre the people who have 
been interrupted in their houses and haven't been able to stay in their own homes. I think that's almost like it's been forgotten. I contacted the organisers. I got two telephone numbers there. One didn't answer at all, so that's disconnected. And the other one got an answering service and nobody responded. So I understand that, that we'll work through this process, but there's... And, and the volume and noise and the constant... And, and Councillor Gobb is right. This is a commercial operation. And why are we burning ratepayers' money um, mopping up the situation? Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Would anyone like to speak for the against, motion? Uh, against the motion? Against. Words. Against. Oh, sorry. You were for no. the motion? Against. No, that was... A, oh, yeah, for. Against. Councillor Davey? Um, I... Sorry, I'll get a little closer. Um, I have a request for clarification on whether receiving a report is actually endorsing that all content is factual. Um, and then I wanted to raise a few points um, around it being unbalanced to support compliance without su supporting the, uh, the positive feedback we've had as well. Um, casting suspicion over that without any evidence I find to be problematic. Um, as has already been said, the there is the opportunity through item three to develop protocols, including um, consequences and follow-up processes for if things don't go to plan. Um, so I'm very keen to take that opportunity. Um, and I would like to note that um, imposing blanket bans can be rather uh, unconstructive and also um, that we need to make sure we're not overstepping and becoming trying to become the regulatory department for noise control when a noise exemption was granted and there's no evidence that the noise exemption was um, contravened at this point. Thank you, Councillor Davey. Um, CEO Hunt, are just, we on track? Um, just in relation to the question that was posed at the front of that, <clears throat> receiving the report's not adopting or endorsing it. The report, you've actually received the report already. Um, so it's, but it's, not, Thank you. it's not endorsing it. Thank you, CEO Hunt. Is anyone wanting to speak against the motion? Sorry, for the motion? Councillor Shand? Yeah, I think that um, I agree. We have received the report. Maybe the word could be changed to commentary because we have got things that haven't been qualified in there as opposed to can, can that happen? Um, to me, a report actually has solid facts and there's some disparity in that. So perhaps we could use the word commentary um, and I agree with all else. Councillor Shand, are you proposing an amendment to this motion that's up now? Um, just a moment, please. Just a moment. Hold. You, you already have a, an, an amendment before the, um, the, yeah, the, the meeting, so you have to deal with that one first. That someone could foreshadow a motion, but you can't have another amendment. And I think you had some other people still waiting to speak. Uh, thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to I'll this I'll foreshadow moment? it. Councillor Shand, hold. OK. Now, we're looking for people to speak for the motion, as it stands up there now. Oh, hold two seconds. Do I need to announce the foreshadowed motion? The, the Councillor Shand needs to outline the foreshadowed motion, and the last call was a motion, was a speaker against, so... So do we note the foreshadowed motion? Yes, please. Yeah, it's a, count, Councillor, Councillor Shand, Shand needs to outline the foreshadowed motion so that we know what's coming down. I do beg your pardon, Councillor Shand. Could you outline the motion so that we know what's foreshadowed? Yes, so in number one, that we accept the report, but we change the word to commentary. Thank you, Councillor Shand. Um, Councillor Lindemann, would you like to speak for the motion? Uh, no, this Sorry, is, against the motion. It's against the amendment. I think the, as um, spoken by a number of councillors already, it's accurate. Um, we should receive it. Um, uh, just a few points. Um, the bottom line, everyone knows, if you enjoy an event, you enjoy it. If you don't, you make sure everyone knows that you didn't. Um, so I would say 2,000 people enjoyed it and 16 people perhaps didn't. Um, we do need to encourage private enterprise to come in and to do these things. Um, we need to be open for business. It may have taken some 
of the staff time. However, that is their job. And as things progress, it gets better and it gets easier when you put things in place, hence the report. Um, I would say that quite often we burn staff time, I might mention, often. Um, you know, should you bill us? Uh, or offer us, you know, maybe we should pay a bond. It generates money, it offers people volunteer work, and I am working in an organisation at the moment, volunteers, there are none. There's none. So they do extremely well to attract the younger people to come and do that. Um, that's probably more. Also, the pass out, the, the point that, you know, people were never leaving and that bakeries were busy. You've got 2,000 people in. You could go for one day, you could go for two days, or you could go for three. You can and could be in there or not be in there. But no, you couldn't leave if you were locked in for the three days, but you could certainly do one day or two days. That was all available to you. Um, that's probably, there was, yeah, we're presenting a report. A report is information. The debate is for other people to, to make use of that information and decide whether that's for them or not. So that's what the debate is, but it is information. Um, yeah, I, I get that sort of feeling of less tolerance is given in this community for a whole lot of things. And I think we need to be a little bit more tolerant of things that don't suit us. Um, and be more open to opportunities that generate money for this town. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lindemann. Would anyone like to speak for this motion? Anyone like to speak against? We'll put it to vote. Oh, Can sorry, right of reply. Right of reply, okay. So, um, the, just to clarify a few things, um, none of this, none of the amendment actually is saying that we should not have an event. All I'm saying is when it's a non-complying event, it comes to council and that the report will say when that should come to council as well. So that might mean that it comes to council if it's something that goes over a longer period of time and is going to be louder than usual, i.e. if it was four days, that would be a great thing to come to council so we could actually look at how that would look and be able to engage the community and say, yep, we know about that, we're aware of it, and this is what we decided to do about it. That's what that part was about. It wasn't to say that we couldn't have non-conforming events. It was just to say that that should come to council for us to have a chat about so that we can look at that and maybe put down a bond if there were things that were breaching those, that, that compliance part of it. So that was the first part. Um, and also the other part was it wasn't, I just find that the information provided in the report is not substantial. There was no one there to say, are you here at the bakery because you've come to that event? So it's very hard to quantify some of the facts that were in the report. I'm a factual person. I'd like to see more facts about that. I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm just saying that it's substantial, um, it's subjective information in the report that makes it seem like it's fact. And so that's why I don't want that to be a bias to the report that the CEO is going to bring back. I'm really interested to see what that report will look like from the CEO and I'm really keen for that to happen. And I'm really keen for the, um, the, the community to have a copy of the frequently asked questions because I think that that will help as well. So it's not saying that I don't want these or I don't think these should happen. I just think that we need to make sure all of our ducks are in line first before it just happens. And just allowing our executive or our administration staff to have control of it, I think that um, that's not what the community would expect from us. Thank you, Councillor Glover. We'll put it to vote. The amended order we're putting to vote. Those for the amended order, would you raise your hands? Thank you. Those against? Casting vote? It's lost 4-5. That brings us back to the original motion. Um, 
doesn't that bring you back to the foreshadowed motion? The amendment, foreshadowed amendment. CEO Hunt, would you advise, please? It's now up to, to you to ask Councillor Shan whether she wants to proceed with the foreshadowed motion. Would you like to proceed with the foreshadowed motion? Yes, please. Thank you, Councillor Shand. Would you like to speak to the motion? Um, I just uh, sorry. I, I beg your pardon. I'm learning. I'm so sorry. Um, we need a seconder, do we, for the foreshadowed yes. motion? Yes. Councillor Bailey, thank you. Now, Councillor Shand, I'm sorry. Would you like to speak to the motion? I think it's all been said by Councillor Glover. Thank you. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? Councillor Patrick. Um, yeah, so my main concern just with the motion, so there's still, I want clarification around point three. Are we requesting um, the CEO because the original motion had noted? So I just want to clarify if under the amended motion we're still requesting as against noting. But also um, my, I believe within point one, um, we're talking about a music debrief summary. That I've just looked at the title of the document. It is debrief summary. It doesn't need. It's not a report. Um, it's not even a commentary. It is a summary. Um, so yeah, I don't believe it necessarily needs to be changed or altered. Um, I agree that probably report wasn't appropriate either. But I think the wording of it still isn't necessarily appropriate. But particularly around point three, I still. Um, believe that we should be noting the CEO because we have been informed as a council that the CEO and the administration will be developing this report, outlining all of those concerns that Councillor Glover had put forward. Totally agree with them all. It's just the appropriateness of where it actually sits will be once that report's presented to us. Um, so I don't necessarily see the need for changes from that original motion. Thank you, Councillor Patrick. Would anyone like to speak for the motion? Thank you. We'll put that to vote. Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Lost? Four to five. Which brings us back to the original motion. Um, is there anyone who... Did we have a for or against last one? Is there anyone who'd like to speak for this motion? Um, I would like to speak more for the motion, if there is no one else. Um, firstly, I commend the quality of the work that is presented to Council and the time taken to carefully analyse what has worked and with the, with the festival and what, what areas required improvement. I'm encouraged by the fact that the event aligns with five objectives that are set out in our Council plan, which is a huge achievement. The Council plan is the outcome of broad community engagement. Feedback from businesses has been positive. We have um, a total of eight complaints and 11 expressions of appreciation. We can make of that what we will, but all of which have been addressed in this report. The executive recommendation at item three is a considered and cautious approach to continuous improvement in holding events of this size. It keeps the door open for continued success in meeting the objectives of the council plan, and it keeps the door open to allow economic growth for local business and it keeps the door open to addressing our strategic concerns of an ageing demographic and less than 1% growth in population in the 21-22 period. I welcome such a cautious approach and I encourage councillors to support the recommendation. Will we put it to vote? All those in favour? All those against? It's carried five. Point of order. <clears throat> through the chair, I mean, do, do, do you move Councilor that motion? Bailey. You move that motion? Oh, the, the original, original motion. Uh, goes back. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay. Right. Sorry, I think maybe you might Moving. be thinking I get to close the debate because I opened it. Is that what you were thinking? Were you thinking I get to close the debate because I opened? No. Thank you. Moving on to 9.1.2, the development application for the Veterinary Centre, Lot 224, Bridgetown Road, bailing up. Would someone like to move the executive recommendation? Move. Councillor Bailey. Would someone like to second it? Councillor Patrick. Councillor Bailey, would you like to speak to the motion? 
Um, through the GMO, it's, it's very clear, and zoning is correct. It's, uh, it'll be a great business in the main street of bailing up, and it'll be a plus factor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Patrick. I look, uh, yeah, I just wanted to speak for the motion. Um, acknowledging the responses from the community and the concerns the community have had, um, but also acknowledging that I believe the responses from uh, the administration to those concerns have addressed those concerns. So do definitely take on board the concerns that have been raised, but feel that they, they have been addressed well. Um, and as Councillor Bailey said, it, it's a good asset to the community. Thank you, Councillor Patrick. Would anyone like to speak for the motion? Anyone like to speak? Sorry. Yes. Um, Councillor Mitchell. I, I do apologise for not bringing this up earlier, but I'm quite sure the um, Manager of Development Services is correct when she says that it is Bridgetown Road. I thought that air, that road was called South Western Highway. Uh, is it? Yeah. Well, thank you very much thank for you. clarifying that. Thank you, Councillor Glover. I'm with Councillor Mitchell. Now, against the motion. Not necessarily against the motion, but I did want to um, raise a point that uh, condition number two I felt was somewhat unnecessary, um, putting a limit on the operating capacity of the facility as only ever having one veterinarian when there could be training opportunities, there could be um, someone out doing the mobile vet service, coming back with an animal, someone else uh, tending to an animal, I just felt like if the concern was regarding the number of parking bays and how busy the facility was, and that was addressed through the parking constraints, which are also conditioned, I thought it was unnecessary to be capping the operational capacity of a business in this regard. Thank you, Councillor Davey. Is anyone else speaking to the motion, for or against? No? Um, right reply? Uh, not, actually, I'd like to move an amendment to my uh, original motion. Uh, what can we do there? Because uh, sorry, I think, CEO I think the, um, the point raised just then is a very good point. And it just saves them coming back if they, did, if they increase the business, and hopefully they will. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. CEO Hunt? Um, we someone else other than, than Councillor Bailey can, can move an amendment. amendment. Um, Councillor Patrick. Um, look, uh, yeah, no, actually, I was going to raise them. Meant I was going to do that, but then I've just realised the cap was actually based on the applicant's application. They specified the number of people being on site, so if that's what they've specified, I won't go with that amendment. Thank you, Councillor Patrick. Councillor Linderman. Could I ask a question um, on point number two, as raised? It doesn't stop the person at a later date possibly expanding or asking at a later date on whether they could have another veterinarian there. Thank you, Councillor Lindman. Would anyone... Correct. Correct. Uh, sorry. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? We'll put it to vote. All those in favour of the motion? Carried. That brings us to 9.1.3, the speed zoning petition for the presentation to, for presentation to Main Roads WA, the South Western Highway in Kirrup. Councillors like to move this motion. Councillor Mitchell, Councillor Patrick. Councillor Mitchell, would you like to speak to the motion? I would, um, thank you. I would like, firstly, I'd like to thank um, Mrs. Leanne Rin. She's done an incredible job of writing this motion. She did all the homework, she did all the legwork. And um, Mrs. Ringe is a very involved member of our local community in Kirrup. She's, she, on top of that, she's gone around and got the petition signed where it is a, uh, it is a petition to Main Roads. It is a, um, it is, this motion is seeking support from the council for me to take to the um, regional road group. And I believe we all need to be very considerate of the members of our small communities. They're there on the ground, noting what happens on a regular basis. 
the slowing of the speed limit doesn't really affect the time it takes to go through town, but we all know that every five you save a life. You, it, you know, like it's, it's, that was a promotion at one stage, that every five k's you drop, you um, can potentially save a life. So I think, and the other important thing that happens is that the regional road group that was to be on, held on Monday passed that I was unable to attend and sent my apologies, it didn't make a quorum. So I'm now able to present this um, directly in person and speak to it at the regional road group, give them any outlines that they actually wish so that um, I can ensure that all communities you know in the that have a responsibility on um, yeah that all communities can have their say and I do note thank you very much um, mrs. president that we are able to or madam president I'm sorry um, that we are able to and it's coming through the system that Main roads is being canvassed by um, the local shires to ensure that they have more say. We know there's going to be a lot of pushback on that, and I can understand why, because they need uniform rules across the um, across the board. So I'd urge you to support this. The it has a absolute groundswell of support through the Curup community, and it is that this is a one step in endorsing something that will um, is going to main roads to get the greater for the greater good so i urge you to support it thank you thank you councillor mitchell councillor patrick yeah thank you madam president um yeah again also i'd like to congratulate uh, the curate progress association on a really good um motion that they've put forward or request um i just wanted to acknowledge i have had uh, feedback from a few trucking companies about the concerns and the impact it might have on acceleration and deceleration um, for major truck lines through there, um, but have sort of reiterated to them that this isn't about the council endorsing or saying otherwise, it's about us submitting it to main, or approving for it to go ahead to go through main roads, who will then make those assessments around the, um, you know, any safety implications, speed implications. So it's really just about the council, you know, supporting uh, Kirrit Progress Association's request and main roads will then do the legwork. So very supportive. Thank you, Councillor Patrick. Would anyone else like to speak for the motion? Anyone like to speak against? Oh. Councillor Gubler? Yeah, I just think uh, just restricting the speed limits for these towns, uh, for the trucks that's going through there, and also the people. Really, it's only, what, 200 metres that uh, from the... As soon as you go over the railway crossing up to probably the hall, this is probably the only area that needs to be reduced. The rest of it's all open road. Um, Mullally up tried to do the same to reduce the speed limit there, but main roads knocked that back. So I don't think that there's a, really a case for dropping the speed line here. So. Thank you, Councillor Gubler. Would anyone else like to speak um, against the motion? Against or for? Against. Against, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, again, this is an amazing um, amen, um, recommendation that's been put through and I, I do acknowledge the work that um, the Curate Progress Association has done. I'm just quite concerned that um, um, this putting this through or, or asking um, it to go through and asking Main Roads to um, have a look at it. I just don't believe it's got enough power behind it <coughs> to be able to substantiate it. The highway in Curup is like one of the hot, widest sections of our southwest highway. It's got footpaths. There's currently really only one business with a caravan park. I understand there is a school there too. Um, and the other part is, is that like, um, I, I get that the, there was a petition signed and there were 90 people spoken to, but they didn't sign the petition. It would have been much more powerful if they had assigned the petition, but it was um, just the, the 60 or so people that signed the petition and many of them were not from that area. They were only visiting that day. Um, so I just, I'm just concerned, oh, and also productivity. I think there will be a lot of pushback on productivity of slowing down trucks going through a town and slowing down productivity. So there will be a lot more pushback, as Councillor Grant was saying as well. I'm just concerned that putting this through 
it's not going to be successful anyway because of all the different elements about this particular um, piece of highway. Thank you, Councillor Glover. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion for I'm just speaking, yeah, I'm just speaking for the motion only because it talks about advisors main roads, it supports the request um, to, I think it says speed zones, town zones conducted, and, sorry, uh, just to revise the speed. It's not actually, yeah, to review the speed zones. So it's not really a decision that anyone's making as yet. It's just a review. So I support it for that reason. Thank you, Councillor Linderman. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? We'll put to vote. Sorry? Oh, it's right of reply, Councillor Mitchell. Yeah. Um, thank you very much and thank you for your comments. I would like to say that the, um, the speed zone is for 700 metres at the lower rate. And until this was brought to my attention, yes, it's very... Um, sorry, I'm going when I'm not allowed to go. <laughs> Bringing up a new subject. So, yeah, I would actually support you to... Um, I would ask that you support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. I'm sorry. It's closed Sorry. Okay. I'll learn to scan the room better, I'm sorry. Um, we'll put the motion to vote. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Carried. That brings us to item 9.1.4, extension of the advertising period for the draft local planning strategy. Would a councillor like to move that motion? Councillor Davey, a seconder. Councillor Bailey. Councillor Davey, would you like to speak to the motion? I think this is really important for the public to uh, review and have their uh, feedback um, had that opportunity for feedback extended beyond the 21 days, given all the things that are happening over the next 21 days, being school holidays, public holidays, Easter. Um, it's not something that we want to rush through. It's uh, something that we should have really considered feedback and review. So that's why I'd like to see it extended. Thank you, Councillor Davey. Councillor Bailey? Um, I agree with everything that was just said. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Would anyone like to speak? Against the motion. Put it to vote. Or for the motion. Sorry. I beg your pardon. Um, Councillor Bailey, would you like right of reply? Because Councillor Davey, would you like right of reply? <laughs> I'm going to rip up my note sheet. <laughs> we'll go around the table. My apologies. Um, we'll put it to vote. All those in favour? Thank you, carried. I'm going to turn my page over now. Brings us up to 9.2, Director of Finance and Corporate. Item 9.2.1, Accounts for Payment for February 2024. Would anyone like to move the motion, the recommendation? Councillor Patrick. Seconder, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Patrick, would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor Mitchell. No. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Thank you. We'll put it to vote. All in favour? Carried. Moving on to 9.2.2, the monthly financial report for February 2024. Would someone like to move the executive recommendation, Councillor Mitchell? Any seconders? Councillor um, Linderman. Councillor Mitchell, do you want to speak to the motion? Councillor Linderman. Anyone else like to comment? Um, all in favour? Thank you. OK, item 9.2.3, the statutory budget review for the 23-24 annual budget. Um, for this, we need an absolute majority, if I'm correct. Can see your hand? Yep. Um, would a councillor like to move the motion, move the executive recommendation? Councillor Mitchell, a seconder. Councillor Lindman. Councillor Mitchell, would you like to speak to the motion? 
Um, I'd just like to thank the Director of Finance and Corporate Affairs and his team for a very in-depth and diligent work um, that it's taken to produce this report. Um, I go through it and I look at the figures and I'm bamboozled halfway down, then I have to go back again, but I'm absolutely 100% confident that it is completely accurate and I appreciate all the work that goes into it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Lindemann? Anyone else like to speak to this motion? May I ask a question, Councillor, please? Councillor Glover? Um, I, ca I can't remember and I'm really sorry. Oh. I'm wondering if you can explain to me um, something about the, the reserves. There was a page on the amendments that speaks about reserves and I, I, I can't interpret it and I, I apologise for that. But if you can explain to me, um, it, it would be helpful to have it um, on the attachment as well, if I could. So I, could, I can't remember what page it is in the attachment though. Is, is that possible? Because it's got all the figures and explaining it without actually seeing it would be difficult. Sorry, so they were saying that was in the attachment and not on the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Glover. Do we need to take that on notice, or are you? No. No. Okay. Thank you, um, um, Director. Of through you, Madam President. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, if I could, um, Sam, if you could scroll up to the um, meat of the uh, attachment, there should be an excerpt in there, which is right on the screen right now. If I may, it, it wasn't about that part. It was actually in the attachment um, understanding about the reserves in the attachment. So the attachment is the, the budget. So okay. it's... So Sam, are you able to place that attachment on screen? That, that budget there, yes. Yeah, yep. So 9.2.3.1 and then... Um, so yeah, the statement of reserves, yeah. So that page. page. Yeah, apologies, I don't... I, my screen's... No, no, that's that's fine. Um, so, is there anything specific, Councillor Glover, that you'd like me to explain, or just a general sort of overview of how the reserves work? Um, so, on the actual attachment, can we get the attachment up on all the screens or not? Because it's probably easier. I don't know if people at home can see our second screen. Just go, yeah, go, go to the top of that, and, and I'll just talk in general terms as to how the layout of the of the report is. Um, so if you if you go to the top, which is uh, reserves waste management. Yep, yeah, keep going. So this is, this is the schedule of reserves and this is every single reserve that council has. Um, and for each of these reserves, each reserve has a purpose set and that is set by council annually. Um, effectively what you're seeing, is there any way we can get rid of the markup tool on the side so we can just see account numbers and headings and... So effectively what you've got, each reserve has three accounts and one is the main reserve fund and in order to be able to report on transactions throughout the year on those reserves, we have transfers to and from reserve accounts as well. Rather than things just happening within an account, and it's hard then to report at a transactional level as to how much have we drawn out of it and how much have we put into it. Um, so take, for example, the waste, uh, the reserve for waste management, uh, the main reserve account um, is 9704, which is the top line. Um, the opening balance, which is cashed back money uh, in, that in that account for the beginning of the financial year, was $1.289 million. Um, we had budgeted, indeed, to have that there at the start of the financial year. And we also budgeted to withdraw $40,000 from the budget. Um, and we uh, intended to uh, push $15,561 back into the budget. 
Um, no budget amendments on that line item. Um, that had been done in the past, okay? Next row is current budget, so pre this report for the statutory budget review. Um, the statutory budget review um, is, oh, sorry, the, so we've got current budget. Um, the year to date actually is just where are we right now? We actually haven't transact, we haven't pulled any money out of the 40 that we intend to, and we haven't pushed any of the 15 in that we intend to at this point in time. Um, and noting that the report says at the end of January 2024. Um, the change in the budget, um, we're going to withdraw an additional $20,000 on top of the 40, which would make the total proposed new budget a total draw of 60, and we'll still be putting the 15,561 in. That $20,000 is actually to complete the bore monitoring, monitoring works that is necessary to effectively comply with our licensing um, applications. So um, the initial estimates on that um, were below what the actual cost has turned out to be, and that's the why uh, the additional transfer from reserve is required. Um, it, what I've just explained for that reserve works for each and every single reserve um, in terms of the way it's reported here. Um, if we scroll down to the end of this report, what you'll see is a, is a net figure um, for transfers from and to. So if we scroll down, I think, to probably about page 25 on, on, uh, on this report. So there you've got a summary of all of the ins and outs. Um, and effectively, total transfers from reserve have collectively add up um, to 112,000, um, which is actually an overall, um, an overall increase as such. Um, the proposed new budget is 2199097 um, from 2132, and I think this is probably where the confusion perhaps is occurring. One's a negative, one's a positive. Um, the, if we go back to the actual agenda document, what you'll actually see is that there's actually ups and downs. So for example, with the building reserve, we're actually returning money or reducing the transfers from that reserve because A, we're either not undertaking some works or B, some works have come under budget and therefore we're not just gonna take money out of reserve if we haven't spent it on a specified project. The two big ones here that have the impact really are the Langley Villas ones, the two fifty thousand dollar transfers um, from those reserves. The funding that goes into those reserves um, actually is uh, any profit or excess funds um, gathered from the operation of uh, Langley Villas year on year. So if there's a profit any profit goes back into that reserve and that, that's as per the joint venture agreement with the department. Um, uh, so we don't get to, if we run it really well and we make a big profit, we don't get that to, to effectively, if I, I, I choose my words, but I'm just gonna simply say to, to assist our operations, all funding and profits actually have to go back into, that, into, the, into those spaces. So. Um, we can only also draw down on those reserves with the uh, approval of the department. So we can't just willy-nilly go, oh, well, you know, we'll put some new benches there, so we'll pull some money from the reserve. We actually seek their approval. And indeed, with the SHERP project, which is a, a quite a significant undertaking there, um, to ensure that uh, we can finish everything off and we've got a, a little bit of a buffer there, um, our director of operations actually liaised with the department and requested the ability to actually pull an additional 50,000 out of these reserves. So what you'll find in the capital budget is that the line item for that work has increased by that $100,000. Um, if indeed we don't end up spending that whole lot, then we simply won't pull out the full $100,000. I hope that goes away to, to answering your question, Councillor Glover. Thank you, Director of Finance and Corporate. 
So, do we have anybody that wants to speak to the motion? Is, is it possible to just ask another question? It, it, that, that was very, very helpful, if I can add. Okay. I, I, I'm allowed to Thank ask you. question. Thank you. Um, I, I'm curious about the process of when there's additional money being spent on items um, without it coming before council. So, for example, there's a drawdown um, out of reserves um, for additional spending that wasn't budgeted, um, and so it's, an, it's an, in addition to what was budgeted. And I'm wondering about the process of when that should come before council because it's an additional expense. Um, there, and there were a few items in the budget that I noticed were additional um, expenses, but they didn't come before council. And I also note that when the commissioner was here, these things did come before council, but we haven't had the chance to have some of these other additional things come before council that they've been made and now we're asked to approve after they've been spent. And I'm just wondering about the process of when it should come before council, before the expenses happened. Because mm -hmm. it seems a little rubber stamping that we're asked to approve it once it's been done. Thank you, Councillor Glover. Director of Finance and Corporate, would you like to respond? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what type of expenditure it is and whether or not, for example, you know, if you want us to bring an item to council uh, because we've got a fire on at the time, um, then help us all. Um, I understand that there is a particular item of plant in the budget amendment, and that's probably what you're referring to. And uh, look, usually and certainly council has had um, amendments come to council previously um, with respect to, you know, we're going to get less for the trade and we're going to get more for, we have to pay more for the prime mover as an example. Um, so I wouldn't say that that items don't come to council. Um, what I would say in regard to that specific item, which is the Parks and Gardens Ute, is that unfortunately, as part of the carry forward of plant items into the 23-24 budget, that item wasn't carried forward. It was committed and approved in the 22-23 budget and it was ordered. So it issued a legal purchase order. So effectively, you know, we had to take the piece of equipment. Um, now, it wasn't ordered just for the sake of ordering it. Um, uh, and at the end, end of the day, we had committed a cost. Um, could it have been reported to council earlier? Yep. Yep, absolutely. I, I could, I, you know, I'm happy to acknowledge that. Um, is it something that, you know, we could also address at a, uh, a whole of budget review um, to say, okay, well, we can fund it this way, um, as opposed to, you know, you know, it, if anything, perhaps with hindsight, it should have been reported to council, and 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 stated that you know, a budget amendment will be sought through the statutory budget amendment review, um, which is a mid-term review. Um, so I, I acknowledge that. Um, in terms of, you know, there are a lot of line items in this budget amendment, and I, I've been very thorough in terms of the way I've gone about this. And um, I think I've said before, if you look after the pennies, the pounds are easier to look after. And certainly with, you know, you, you will have seen some amendments there that are two, three hundred dollars and a lot of the time you, you don't waste time on that. But when I know exactly what something is and I know we're not going to incur another cent, you know, 50 entries of 200 to 500 dollars can add up to a significant sum. And rather than come to council and beg or say, oh, we better pull more money from reserve, I'd, pre I'd prefer to, to, you know, undertake the sort of activity that I did. Um, certainly there are items that, um, you know, we budget, you know, and I think it's all, all the same for all of us. Um, and we can talk about, um, well, you've got a budget, just stick to it. Life's not that simple. But what we do as, a, as, a, as an organisation is ensure that we work together and not in silos so that we can deliver um, and not push 
the, the local government and you as members of the council into a situation where we're doing a statutory budget review and we're looking at a deficit. Um, so I, I commend the staff um, within the Shire who, who um, you know, had a lot of input into the budget review um, uh, and hopefully, um, you're not sick of my voice yet, but um, hopefully I've answered your, your, your question, Councillor Glover. <coughs> Thank you, Director of Finance and Corporate. And, and, um, I, and I, can, may I make a comment? I think we need to have some more to move along and see if anybody else would like to speak to the motion. Would anybody else like to talk to the motion? Okay, Councillor Glover. Thank you. Um, I do commend you on the effort and the work that has been done in it. I do appreciate the fact that there are um, notes on there that, that correlate to the council plan and then from there you can actually see the correlating to the outcomes from the, the, the quarterly reports as well. Um, that's fantastic and I think it's something new that we haven't had before and it starts to talk to a corporate plan, <laughs> which is wonderful and I'm all for seeing how these things all fit together because these documents were previously all standalone documents and they didn't match up um, and I'd, it would be great to see this continue to happen and work towards that corporate plan and I do appreciate the work that has gone into it. It's a lot of work. I read it line by line. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glover. Okay, would anyone else like to speak to this motion? Okay, um, Councillor Mitchell, light of reply. Um, put it to vote. All those in favour? Councillor Glover? All those, all those against? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to 9.2.4. Request to group value rateable rural land J.S. Fry. Um, Councillor Davey. Uh, rather than moving the uh, executive recommendation as stated, I'd like to propose an alternate motion. Thank you, Councillor Davey. Would you like to... I think we've got it here. You've submitted it ahead of time. Is this being done the right way? Yeah, we're just getting it up there. Yeah. Yeah. See, Johan, do I have to move the other motion first? No. Okay. The alternate motion... Councillor Davey? Would you like to speak to the alternate motion? Can I just request, do I read the motion as stated or do I speak to the motion with my justification? I think I have to. Does it need to be read out first and then we move it or? I think because not everyone's necessarily got a copy, it'd be good if Councillor Davey reads it so that we make sure it's right and, and then we can go from there. Okay. So if you would like to read the motion, Councillor Davey. That Council 1 defers making a decision on the request from Mr J.S. Fry in relation to his request for a group valuation for rating purposes of multiple rural lots. And item 2, request the Chief Executive Officer develop a group rating policy to be presented to the Council at the June Ordinary Council meeting for consideration. Thank you, Councillor Davey. I just need a seconder for that motion. Councillor Bailey. Would anyone like to speak? Yes, I'm sorry, Councillor Davey. Would you like to speak to the motion? So it was put to council that a decision to support this proposal in whole, um, considering all lots listed or in part, considering the lots that are contiguous and share a common family name, would establish a precedent and cause an unquantified impact on rates revenue, which would be unfair and inequitable. 
I suggested a decision not to support the proposal in the absence of such a policy and without a clear understanding of the impact also establishes a precedent, a precedent which may not align with the policy that we intend to create. I suggested in the absence of absence of a considered and approved policy on the matter, it would be premature of council to make a decision regarding this particular proposal. Um, I would like to draw council's attention to page 42, um, the officer's comments that without a policy, there is no criteria or evidence requirements for officers to be able to assess an application fairly and consistently. Similarly, there is no, without a policy, there's no criteria or evidence requirements to um, enable council to assess the application fair, fairly and consistently. And rather than uh, set a precedent in this situation, I think we should first establish a policy. Thank you, Councillor Davey. Councillor Bailey? With a policy, we'll have a clear direction. And I believe there's a lot of people looking for rate relief. And this is one of them. And policy will tell us how we're going to handle and where we're going to get the money from if we go down this path. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Would anyone like to speak to the motion? Councillor Mitchell? Uh, may I thank you, Councillor Davey, for putting together a very clear and precise um, alternative motion. I think it's a good idea. I had many, many words put down. However, I think the idea of um, yeah, um, deferring so that we can get the... I was on, I work with policy. I um, said all along that um, we needed a policy on this, so thank you very much for putting it together. And the idea of deferring is um, very good and shows a great understanding of the process. So I'd like to urge everyone to um, support this motion with the view that we're not making a decision about it. We're going to look at it, develop a policy, understand the repercussions, bring it back to council, and to the CEO and his team, I absolutely commend you on supporting that it can be done by June. I think that's pretty um, a lot of work uh, to get done by then, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? Councillor Patrick? Thank you, Madam President. Um, look, I'm not going to so much speak against the motion, sort of am, because that's what I'm obliged to do right now. I, I do agree um, with point one, definitely. Um, point two, my only concern around developing a policy is, so a policy is, is a then guides decision making. But the one thing a policy doesn't do is actually provide us an understanding of the implications, the bigger picture implications. Um, so my concern around uh, endorsing this as it stands now is that we will get a policy that guides us on what to do, but it won't actually outline the implications, both financial for the rest of the community um, or you know for the individuals. So whilst I do absolutely believe this should exist. I'm just concerned about the steps that we're taking to get there, and I feel that there should be a, probably a step in between that actually provides council with an understanding of the implications before we're then asked to sign off on a policy. Um, so it's just pleased to the councillors consider that in making a decision. I'm not necessarily saying don't support this, but it's just a consideration. Thank you, Councillor Patrick. Um, would anyone like to speak for the motion? Um, I'm in support of this motion. However, in light of um, Councillor Patrick's comments, is there an amendment to the alternative that could be slotted in there that may cover that? And yeah, I guess it'd be more comprehensive because I too would also like to know, I guess, the repercussions. Thank you, Councillor Linderman. Councillor Bailey. <clears throat> Through the chair, I would have thought, and, and you're right, I would have thought that that the outcome or the implications of doing such an action would be part of the report. We, we, can't, we can't put a policy together unless we know how it's going to affect us, is what you're saying. And I, I would expect that CEO would take that into consideration because we're talking about our finances for the whole organisation. So I think if there's an understanding that that's going to be there or else we would not accept the policy if we didn't understand the ramifications. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Glover. 
My um, query was um, that um, at the, uh, the agenda briefing, um, there was talk of a letter from the Valuer General, and I'm wondering if that part, if there's any answers within that letter that has been coming, has come from the Auditor General, I mean, sorry, the Valuer General as well, um, because Mr Fry had a letter from him, as, from the Auditor General as well. Um, I'd like to see that letter. Thank you, Councillor Glover. Um, was that a Was that a question, or were you talking to the motion? Um, I guess, is there a letter? Would that help us to inform this? There, there was talk of a letter. Um, I've asked for a copy of it because I wanted to um, have that. So for me, for deferring this, it would be to gather more information, and one of the, that pieces of information would be the letter that has been received from the Valuer General. So you're asking now for a, a view of that letter? Thank you. Um, Director of Finance and Corporate, do you have the copy of that? Uh, through you, Madam President. Um, I've circulated the email. Um, I've got nodding faces. Um, yeah. And uh, it, it, it didn't bring any clarity to what, what, how, what, how would it change if it, if it was allowed. But what it did state was effectively that they won't group them. Um, for the purpose of rating, i.e. provide one valuation, unless the Shire make a decision to allow same ownership of all of the eight assessments on our, on our books, on our records. That's what the content of the email was. Thank you, Director of Finance and Corporate. Um, Councillor Mitchell. May I ask a question for clarity, please? Yes. Uh, through you to the CEO, and can you please clarify that the ramifications will be considered before the policy is um, put together and endorsed. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. See you, Hunt. My intention is yes. Um, the rider on that is um, a matter which will come up later tonight. But um, the intent is that if you develop a policy, as Councillor Bailey quite rightly says, you need to know what the implications are. How accurate that can be might be another moot, might be a moot point, but uh, I wouldn't put a policy forward that I had no idea of what the potential implications are. It might be from here to here, but you would have an outline of that. Thank you, CEO Hunt. Um, any further questions? I'm oh, sorry. Any further comments to the um, debate? Okay, Councillor Davy, right of reply. I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention that the Landgate policy already allows for group valuation. So to ask for the issue of group valuation to be uh, quantified by the council when it's beyond its jurisdiction, I think is unhelpful and not particularly valuable. Um, to uh, what I anticipate is that there would be very few applications that would be made under the category of on uncommon ownership, which is the only thing that we're considering um, under the policy. Sorry, as it's the only thing under the Landgate policy that council is being asked to make a decision on is uncommon ownership. Um, so based on the officer's comments around the, the, I find that it's unlikely that we're gonna be promoting broad scale application of uncommon ownership group valuations. This is a very niche area. So I think when we talk about having lots of detail about the ramifications, with this is, this is not going to be um, broad scale application. And we will get to review the policy and before it's endorsed. Thank you, Councillor Davey. We'll put that to vote. All of those in favour of the alternative motion? Carried. It's item 9.2.5, Compliance Audit Return for 2023. Would someone like to move the committee recommenda recommendation? Is this the one we already covered? Yeah. Oh. <coughs> Sorry, I've knocked my...
Compliance audit return. Okay. Okay. Nine point two point five, the compliance audit return. Um, if I might, Madam okay. President, part of this we carried in trying to deal with the dilemma that was challenging people in terms of the, uh, the minutes of the meeting. So I, I would suggest to the council that um, the, re the resolution or the motion be the council notes that at item whatever it was at the front end of the agenda, the issue of the meeting of the Audit and Risk Committee was dealt with and the second recommendation, which is um, endorse the certification by the Shire President and CEO be the second part, and that should hopefully wrap it all up. Thank you. Hang on. That's, that's the AGM. So do you still want to go back in the Yeah, yeah. Where are we going so the compliance to? return... The resolution I'd ask the council to consider is that you note that the council notes that that item, whatever it was earlier tonight, I don't know the number in, uh, off the top 7. of my head, 7.5, um, dealt with the report from the Audit and Risk Committee. And number oh, two I'm would be endorse the certification of the Shire President and CEO uh, in so signing the document. So we're still doing the item two? Yeah, you need to do yeah. item two because it wasn't okay. carried off in the other recommendation. So we're looking to move the executive recommendation, I'll read it out, that council endorse the certification by the Shire President and Chief Executive Officers prior to submission to the Department of Local Government, Sport and Cultural yeah. Industries. Yeah. Okay. Um, would someone like to move that motion? Councillor um, Bogan? Just a point perhaps for the minutes that I asked that question, whether we were adopting the second item at the point that we discussed it, and we were told we were. So oh, I believe okay. we have already endorsed it. Okay. Well then, sorry, thanks for that clarification. I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately. Then the resolution I'd, sorry, the motion I'd recommended, the council notes at item 7.5, that matter was dealt with. And then, then, then it'll flow in terms of the history of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay, 9.3, Chief Executive Officer, 9.3.1. Oh. Okay, I'll move that the Audit and Risk Management Committee recommends to Council that the 2023 Compliance Audit Return for the Shire of Donnybrook Bailing Up for the period 1st to January 2023 to 31st of December 2023 be adopted. So, and notes that the council 
notes that Council dealt with this matter at item 7.5 in this agenda. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Mitchell. Would anyone like to, to speak to the motion? I'm happy with that. Okay, all in favour? Thank you. Excuse me, Madam President. Councillor Davy. It doesn't note item two. Notes that the council dealt with this matter at item 7.5 in the agenda. Um, <laughs> Director of Finance and Corporate. M Madam President, if I may speak with your permission. Um, I think what the minutes need to reflect is the decision that was made up at 7.5, because then you're recording when the decision was made. Um, now, you've carried a motion here, frankly, could have been an advice note that simply said that the matter was dealt with up above. Item. Motion's been passed, no harm done. Um, but I think the minutes need to uh, reflect at item 7.5 that item 9.2.5 was dealt with and what the motion was, who moved it, who, who seconded it and what the vote was. And I think we can, we can do that. Do we need to do anything here then? No. Now, we're going on to the Chief Executive Officers. Do we need to wait for him to return to the, this? We'll keep going. Yeah, yeah, decision. Okay. We'll see how we go with this. We might need to wait until the CEO returns. There he is. Okay, 9.3, Chief Executive Officer, 9.3.1, electors' motions received at the 2024 Annual General Meeting of Electors. Would anyone like to move the executive recommendation? Councillor Patrick. Would anyone like to second the recommendation? Councillor Lindemann. Councillor Patrick, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, no, other than um, I think the four electors' motions that were put forward were all um, really good motions. Um, I think some of it, it was a great minds think alike kind of deal because I know the Shire administration was already looking at some aspects of that, which was great. Um, but I think, yeah, that if um, the administration, specifically the CEO, can come back to us with that report for each of the motions, um, yeah, I think it would be beneficial to the community. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Patrick. Councillor Lindemann. Nothing to say. Would anyone else like to speak for the motion? Would anyone like to speak against the motion? We'll put it to vote. All of those in favour? Thank you. It's carried. Moving on to item 10, elected member motions of which previous notice has been given. And we have none. Item 11, new business of an urgent nature. We have none. And then item 12, meeting closed to the public. Um, matters which the meeting may be closed, 12.1.1, VC Mitchell Park Pavilion 2 Tennis Club, completion works. Um, Councillor Glover will be leaving the room for this item and we will close the meeting and the, um, the, uh, the audio visual. I'll move, I'll move to close the meeting. We haven't closed the meeting yet. Yeah, I haven't got there yet. So I'd just like to say that anyone on the live stream, if you'd like to join us when we um, come back into the meeting, you're welcome, but it will only be to, um, to read out the outcome of the motion and then we'll be closing the meeting. So we can come off the live stream now and close the meeting. I'll move a mo motion, motion to close the meeting. Councillor Lindemann, Councillor Shand, seconders. Um, everyone in favour? I declare the meeting closed. And note that...
councillors, we're now back live. Um, Thank you. Okay, reading of the resolutions at 12.2, that Council receive the Tallison Community Investment Program items, list as per attachment 12.1.1, brackets 1. Item 2, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to 2.1, engage in a professional engage a professional construction industry quantity surveyor to independently value the contract variation to demonstrate the best value for money is attained by the Shire. And 2.2, approve the contractor to proceed with contract variation CV 011, rev, um, revi revision one, as per attachment 12.1.12 for pavilion two, completion works, and at 2.3, establish a new chart of accounts for the Tallison Community Investment Program, funding with job codes in accordance with item one above, and transfer current expenditure items to the new chart of accounts. And that was carried seven to no, unanimously. Um, item 13 brings us to closures. Now, the next agenda briefing session will be held on the 17th of April, 2024, commencing at 5 p.m. in the Shire of Donnybrook Bailing Up Council Chamber. And I declare the meetings closed at 7.06 p.m. Thank you, councillors. Well done. <laughs>